Salutations, welcome to my channel. This is my first tutorial and today we will be making a procedural blueprint grid texture in Blender. I'm going to, before we start, just make sure our node wrangler is active. So I'm going to go to edit, preferences, make sure I'm under the add-on section, search for node and see mine is already active. If yours is not, just Hit that little tick and your node wrangler will be active. I'm going to delete the default cube and instead work with a plane. So I'm going to press shift A under the mesh, select plane. And then up here, I'm going to switch to the shading tab. I'm going to close that window. That okay. If you struggle to close it that way, you can uh, hover between them until you get this double arrow and then you can say join areas all right so with our plane selected i'm going to create a new material i'm going to rename it blueprint grid i'm going to use the numpad and press 7 to go into top view and then get started so in my shader settings i'm first going to delete the principled bsdf shader probably bring it bring it back later and we're going to start by pressing shift a to bring up our add menu and i'm going to go under texture and i'm going to select wave texture once i've done that i'm going to press while well, with this wave texture selected Control t and that will bring up my mapping and texture coordinate this only works if you have Node Wrangler activated, which we have already done. Another cool thing to do then is press Control, Shift, and left click, and that will um, show us a preview of the node we selected. So that's our starting point. I'm going to press Shift A, and under Converter, I'm going to select a color ramp and bring that in here. I'm going to switch the color ramp settings from linear to constant and bring that up to there. Okay. So, oopsie daisy. Actually, I am going to do that. Close both of those. I'm going to select both of these. And with both of them selected, I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate. And I'm going to plug my mapping into the vector here as well. Then I'm going to press Shift Select on this color ramp. Obviously, there will be no difference because it's the exact same as it's a duplicate. But we are going to change it by changing this X to a Y. So then that will be horizontal. So next thing I need to do is I need to combine these two together I'm going to use a converter math node I'm going to set this to maximum plug in the color into the values and that gives us little dots I want to make them kind of thin, kind of long. So then this color ramp is um, controlling the width of these lines, and this one is controlling the height. So what we want now is this exact same sort of setup, but we want this running in the horizontal um, direction. So I'm going to select these and duplicate it. And then I'm going to change these two around. This will become Y on the top and the second one will become X. I'm just going to move this down. Plug in my mapping node into the vector on both of these.
and then I need to combine these two nodes. But just to make sure we're on the correct path, it looks like we are, you can see those are going horizontal. I'm going to need another math node, so I'm going to press Shift A, go under Converter, select Math, and I'm going to plug in this one to that value, this one into that value, and that gives us almost what we want, but we don't want that sort of transparency. So I'm going to use multiply, and that gives us our first step. So these will all be the points in between. Now I need to make one more grid. Dear me. That runs underneath those. Now I'm getting quite node heavy in here. There's probably a more efficient way of using nodes, but this is the way I figured out, so bear with me. Actually, I'm going to duplicate these without the color ramps. We will be using a color ramp again, but I want to set it up from the start. Okay, so I'm going to select this wave texture, press Control shift left click, and I'm going to add a color ramp by pressing Shift A, going under Converter, adding a color ramp, and once again setting it to constant. It's going to be quite thin. And I'm going to duplicate this color ramp. Uh, one more thing. I th don't think it matters that much, but I'm just going to bring this back to sort of the default setting. So change that one to X and this one to Y. So then this top one is going horizontal, and the second one is going. I mean, the top one is going vertical, the second one is going horizontal. All right. Then I'm going to combine these two. I'm going to press Shift A under Converter. I'm going to add a math node. Put them together. I pressed Control Shift left click, so that gives me the grid. But once again, they're doing graying out, so I'm going to say multiply. And I'm going to make this much thinner. As thin as it can go. I'm going to do the same with this one. Okay. Then the next step is going to be to take these and combine it with this one. And to do that, we'll use another math node, converter, math. Okay, just a disclaimer, I have no idea. I'm very bad at math, so I don't know how the math nodes work, and I found this setting through trial and error. Just to keep it all above board. Okay. Almost, but not quite. So... This will set to multiply as well. And there you go. That's the grid we want. So we have our sort of center points being across. You can play with them. It's the top one and the top two, color ramps wise, that will control their width and height. So. However you set the vertical lines, then you can just copy the values from these color ramps to the color ramps of the horizontal lines. Okay, so basically we're almost done. The next thing we need is to add our colors because now it's just obviously black on white. 
So I'm going to press Shift A, go on the shaders, bring up a mix shader, and I'm going to plug this grid setup into the factor. And now, basically those two nodes are going to be the background color and the grid color. So you can use a principal, two principal shaders or any other two kinds of shaders that you want. I'm just going to go with principal to complete this one. So let's plug that in there. I'm just going to duplicate this one and plug them both in here. Obviously if they're both white you won't really get any results. So I'll change the second one to a blue as these blueprints usually are blue. Get a nice blue. And well Basically, there you have it. Bob's your uncle and Fanny's your aunt. You can obviously also add them to different objects. So I'm going to add a sphere. I'm going to make it smooth and I'm going to add the blueprint grid. Now obviously on this one, it is not displaying correctly. So that's where our texture coordinates going to come in handy with the plane. Um, I think it's always almost almost always it should display cor display correctly so I'm gonna plug in the UVs from the texture coordinate and there you go so now it's displaying better I still don't like it because I feel like they're not square they're a bit stretched so I'm actually gonna copy this one so that it stays because it looks good on the plane, so I don't need to change anything on the plane. But I'm going to make a copy of the material, and then with the sphere selected, I will change the scale a little bit here. Okay. Change the Y, stretch them out a bit. A little bit more square, boys. Okay. Well, but that's basically it. It's a little simple. Um, the nodes don't look so simple, but they're kind of the same. It's just a bunch of wave textures overlaying one another and then being combined and then plug into a mix shader to bring up your colors. So yeah, that's it for today. Thank you for stopping by. I hope this helps you. And yeah, 